Hey everyone, Dan and Leslie here, back again for another video about Disney dining. So many of you have asked for a summary of everything that we've tried so far. We are just past halfway and trying all of the table service restaurants in Disney. Can you believe so, it? So <laughs> here's our ranking for the 50 restaurants that we have reviewed in the last, what, 14 months since we've been doing this for Disney World table service restaurants. All right, so this is pretty fun to like go back and remember um, everything that we have eaten <laughs> over the last 14 months and where we um, put these restaurants in the various rankings. Some of them I feel like we need to go back and give them another go because know. they're a little low. So <laughs> real quick, like these rankings, are they are our opinions for our reviews based off of our one experience. If you want to see each individual review, we encourage you to go back in the playlist for Disney dining reviews and check those out. We took this, this, the overall scores for all 50 restaurants. We ranked them in order from number 50 to number one, and we're gonna run through them. A lot of them because it's on a scale of zero, well, I guess, one to five stars. A lot of them have the same score. So we're yeah. going to, the ones that have the same score, we're kind of lump those together and we'll tell you what our preference are and what we rank those things. But, so this doesn't take half an hour. <laughs> Let's get to it. I can just say right here that this has been a really fun um, last 14 months experiencing all of these and I'm looking forward to the next 14 months experiencing the rest of the list that we haven't gotten to yet. <laughs> um, so we are gonna stop start at number 50 and the lowest ranked restaurant that we went to with Space 220 and Epcot, receiving a 2.2. 2.2 .2 out of five. I don't understand why this thing is as popular as it is. I mean, it is a cool experience, but as far as food quality, drink quality, service, it really just fell way below the mark. Yeah. Another thing about all these reviews, like Disney dining is so, so good in most instances. If this review gets a three stars or above, we consider it a pretty good restaurant. So anything below three stars, we don't plan on going back ever. Anything above three stars, we would at least consider it. So yeah. Space 220, sorry. Number 49 is T-Rex Cafe at 2.5 stars. I am honestly shocked that this wasn't the lowest one, but um, enough said. I don't know. I mean, if your kid loves dinosaurs, that is about the only reason to go to this restaurant. Yep. All right, at number 48, we're gonna stay in Disney Springs and it is Terralina Crafted. Um, this one is a 2.75 and there was just nothing quite like testing fire alarms during the middle of our meal. <laughs> <laughs> number 47 is gonna be Paradiso 37 at 3.0 stars. There is just nothing special about this restaurant. It is fine if you want some sort of like Mexican, like Tex-Mexy thing in Disney Springs, but there's nothing to write home about. All right, number 46 is Todd English's Blue Zoo. Um, this one was over at Dolphin? Swan, Swan Dolphin, I don't know, one of those. Swan Dolphin area. Uh, and it came in at a 3.125. Uh, there was just a lot of like, while the food was good, there was a lot of very odd things that happened while we were there to include my drink container being taken away before I was done with it, which I'm still very upset about. Number 45 <laughs> over at the Polynesian is the Kona Cafe. This came in at a 3.25. Honestly, um, it may be fantastic now. It has been renovated since we reviewed it, so we will have to go back and review it again, but there just wasn't anything special about it. It was meh. All right, we had several at this 3.25 category. So the next one, uh, the next higher one that we felt was um, at number 44, Hollywood and Vine over at Hollywood Studios. Um, so this one is a great character experience, particularly if your kids like um, the kind of classic characters for uh, lunch and dinner for many seasonal dine. Or if you're looking for an experience with Disney Junior, then I think it's probably a must do because you get a lot of those at breakfast. Number 43 over to Epcot in the China Pavilion is gonna be Nine Dragons. This was actually fairly, it was better than I thought it was gonna be. It also came in at 3.25. That's why it's ranking a little bit higher than some of the other 3.25s. Um, the food was actually pretty good. As far as just Chinese food goes, it was an elevated Chinese experience, I thought. Um, there just wasn't anything like over the top about it that we yeah. felt like it deserved higher than a 3.25, but if you're in the mood for Chinese food, You'll, you'll be pleased. Yeah. Number 42 is Akershus over at Epcot. Now this is in the Norway Pavilion and this is a fantastic place to meet multiple princesses all at once. Um, it is a little pricier um, and the food was sometimes 
different and unique. Um, so I'm not sure how great it would be for those pickier eaters, but, um, but overall, I mean, it was a decent option. Number 41, also a 3.25, is the Crystal Palace and Magic Kingdom. The location of this thing honestly can't be beat. It is right in the hub, just off the hub grass. Like, you can see Cinderella Castle as you're walking in the building. You can also meet characters. It is a dining experience with Winnie the Pooh and friends, Tig Tigger, Piglet, and Eeyore, right? Yeah. Um, and it is a buffet, <laughs> and actually the buffet was pretty good. We ate there for lunch. Um, they had like a prime rib roast cutting station. And our last 3.25 scorer is Ale and Compass, uh, which is over at the Yacht Club. Um, now this one was, um, it was a good option. You know, I it's definitely one that if I needed a, a sit down place to eat, it's a solid choice to go back to. Um, definitely not my favorite restaurant on property, but it's not the most terrible one either. Coming in at three and a half stars is number 39, and that's Rick's Sports Bar. We just reviewed this recently. Um, this was actually a pretty good option for a sports bar. The problem that I see it is that it is so far out of the way from anything else. Like it's almost yeah. impossible to get to. It is over at Coronado Springs. There's nothing really around that. It is a convention hotel. It is meant to hold large groups of people. So this is just one more restaurant that they threw in there. There is also so many other great uh, places to grab a drink or a bite to eat at Coronado Springs. It would not be my first choice there. That being said, if it's, if you're staying at Coronado Springs, you just want to catch a game, catch a, a you know, grab a beer, have some wachos, which are like a combination waffle fry nachos. It's it's pretty legit. Like, Solid it's good. choice. Solid choice. At 3.5 is Sebastian's Bistro. This is over at Caribbean Beach. Um, this one was good. You know, it was it's a definitely um, solid option, particularly if you're staying at Caribbean Beach. I think I can echo a lot of what Dan just said about ale or uh, about Rick's for Sebastian's Bistro as well, in that it's just not super convenient to make your way all the way over to Caribbean Beach for this restaurant if you're not staying there already. Number 37, also at three and a half stars, is Rose and Crown in the UK Pavilion over in Epcot's World Showcase. Um, this is good. I did appreciate the food. It was done very well. I got the fish and chips. However, um, it was a little bit of a hassle getting in there and getting set by the water. So it ended up being a good experience, but it just wasn't like blow you away over the top. I think if I wanted fish and chips inside of Epcot, I'd probably just grab the quick service fish and chips mm. outside of Rose and Crown and then grab a drink inside the Rose and Crown because anybody can just walk up to the bar inside of Rose and Crown and grab an authentic beverage in there. I love getting Guinness in there. Mm. Uh, or a Boddington's cider, cider and black is great. So that's what we, re we would recommend, honestly, unless you're doing Rose and Crown specifically for a reason, like a fireworks show package, something like that. All right, number 36, still at three and a half, is going to be Le Cellier, which is in the Canada Pavilion at Epcot. Um, now this one was good. Like the food was very good. I don't, I, I still don't understand why people rave about this steak over so many of the other options in um, the Disney World property, but that's kind of why it ranked where it ranked. If you want a steak, go to Shula's, go to Yasmin. They're both within walking distance of La Cellier. Go to Those the are boat both house. better. Boathouse is not within walking <laughs> distance, but better steak over there. So, yeah, totally agree. Number 35 is going to be right outside that International Gateway at Epcot. We're just kind of staying in the Epcot area, <laughs> I guess, right now. It's Beaches and Cream over at the Beach Club. This is a fantastic option for the price point. This oh was gosh, yes. by far the cheapest table service meal ranking this high for us. We <laughs> Um, we got a ton of food. We were stuffed out of there. We each got a, a Sunday bigger than our heads over there. I wouldn't and it recommend was, both of you getting a Sunday. <laughs> truth. It was fantastic though. You can get the kitchen sink there, which is like, it's a fun one. I mean, we've had it, the four of us, and we couldn't finish it between the four of us. And that was our meal too. You can also, if it's hard to get a reservation here because it's small and very popular, um, they have a quick service window. So you can actually walk up and just order at the window. So if you can't get a reservation, you can still try their ice cream and food. Yep. All right, number 34 coming at three and a half stars is Be Our Guest over at Magic Kingdom. Um, you know, this one had good food. It just took so long. And Magic Kingdom is such an iconic park to take so long out of your day, an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes to sit for a meal. 
it just, I, it, that, it really pulled down the score for us. But the West Wing is really awesome. The whole environment inside of Be Our Guest is fantastic. I'm hoping that at some point it comes back where uh, lunch and breakfast is quick service so that everybody can kind of experience it again. Not to mention it's pretty expensive. It's pretty expensive. Number three, 33 coming in again at three and a half stars. This is their highest three and a half star rating is going to be Yak and Yeti over Disney's Animal Kingdom. Um, honestly, I love this place. It, it, it For me, like, yeah, it's three and a half stars because of a couple of reasons. Go watch the review, but I would 100% hands down go get those ahi tuna nachos mm. any day of the week. I love of those things. Yes. All right, 32. We're going to head over to Animal Kingdom theme park and go to Tusker House. This is a very weird score of 3.625. Um, but, you know, it was it used to be one of our favorites. Both of us were a little disappointed whenever we went back in um, some of the food options and kind of the way they were managing the characters. Um, all in all, the characters are adorable here. It is a very solid character meal option for you and your family whenever you're in Animal Kingdom. Number 31 is 3.75 stars for Flying Fish over in the bar boardwalk. Um, honestly, like the food was great, but the service wasn't the best and it took forever to get set. Like we were way past our reservation time before we ever got set. So that just started off the meal on a negative foot and they never really recovered from there. Yep. Number 30 over at um, Wilderness Lodge is Whispering Canyon. We're sticking with that 3.75 rating. And this one is fun. Uh, you know, we avoided it for so many years because um, we're not huge fans of like the heckling while you eat thing. But this was actually really enjoyable and hilarious. And definitely you got almost like a dinner and a show because of uh, their antics. 29 over at Disney Springs. Also at 3.75 is Paddlefish. Honestly, this was higher than I thought we would rate it, but it turned out to be better than the last time that we had eaten there. Mm -hmm. And it was a very pleasing experience. The food was pretty good. Number 28 at that 3.75 rating is Citricos. Uh, this was really, it was outstanding. Um, the food was delicious. It's very pricey. Definitely, probably for us, something more of a um, special occasion as opposed to a weekly type meal. 27 over at Magic Kingdom at 3.75 is Tony's Town Square. I never thought I would be rating this <laughs> nearly this high when we had a list of 50 restaurants. I hated it the first time we tried it years and years ago. Tasted like Chef Boyardee. They have <laughs> completely revamped the menu and turned it around. This is one of the better table service restaurants in Magic Kingdom. I will be back. I never thought I would be saying that. Yeah. All right, 26, Frontero Cucina also gets a 3.75 score over at Disney Springs. Love this restaurant. Really good Mexican food, great margaritas. Number 25, also 3.75 is Morimoto Asia. Um, honestly, this is a fantastic restaurant. And just because it is 3.75 along with some of these others does not mean it is not worthy of a, an advanced dining reservation because we love this place. We've eaten here a bunch. It was a great lunch that we experienced. Great sake, great service. 3.75 is a solid score. I would 100% be back to Morimoto Asia. Same goes for number 24, which is City Works over at Disney Springs. 3.75 once again, and it is one of our favorite places to go. Um, usually it's very easy to get a reservation and the food is solid. Number 23, uh, this was a one and done for me probably. It, <laughs> it is uh, 3.875, it is hoop de doo review. I'll go back if anyone wants to take me. Yeah, take <laughs> Leslie. Um, I am, I was a fan of the show, it was fantastic. I'm not so much a fan of the interaction, like getting called upon and like coming around and like sticking a microphone in your face, but the uh, the live entertainment was fantastic. The service, not so much. The service, um, there were not enough servers to take care of everyone there effectively. So while it is all you care to enjoy, like beer, wine, um, sangria, and the food, like you couldn't get anything. Like you had to basically tackle the waiter before you could get anything back. So the service had a lot left to be desired. Our next one at 22 is Storybook Dining over at Artist Point, which is at Wilderness Lodge. This comes in at a 4.0 and it is fantastic and a great option to get to meet the Evil Queen as well as Snow White, Dopey, and Grumpy. Um, Disney, please bring us more villains. That's all we want. 
anything that's four and above, you will be lucky to get a reservation for. Yeah. All of these rest of these restaurants that are four and above are fantastic so dining experiences. So next up is number 21 Garden Grill at Epcot. Mm -hmm. Also 4.0 stars, but unreal. The food is great. The service was great. Meeting uh, Mickey and Pluto and Chip and Dale are so, so fun. This is a good one. Yep. The next one at number 20 is Sci-Fi Dine-In over at Hollywood Studios. It's also coming in at 4.0. Uh, the food is okay. I mean, it's fine. It's good. It's not like over the top, crazy delicious. But what gets it here is this ambiance. It has the best, arguably, I would say, one of the best ambiances in all of Disney World property. Number 19 over at Magic Kingdom 4.0 as well as Liberty Tree Tavern. This is an all you care to enjoy experience. If you like Thanksgiving dinner, like traditional mm. Thanksgiving dinner, go. Yes. It is unreal and that sticky toffee pudding at the end. <sighs> ooey gooey toffee cake. Whatever. That's what it's called. Ooey gooey toffee cake. Sticky toffee pudding is something. <laughs> Whatever. Ooey gooey toffee cake is legit. So good. So good. So good. The next one, number 18 is the Yachtsman. This is over at Yacht Club. Um, it also comes in at 4.0 and that steak was heavenly. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> number 17 is Skipper Canteen in the Magic Kingdom, also at 4.0. We put this a little bit above the Liberty Tree Tavern because it does have um, some really cool vibes going on in there. It's themed to the Jungle Cruise. All of the waiters and waitresses are like the skippers from the Jungle Cruise. They make those same silly jokes and the food is actually really good. Number 16 is Beer Garden over at the Germany Pavilion at Epcot. It also comes in at 4.0. It was arguably one of the best buffets that we have had on property. Number 15 is Steakhouse 71 at the Contemporary Resort. We love, love, love this restaurant at 4.0. It is really, really good. We love the lounge there. We love the breakfast there. We love the uh, the main food offerings there. So do yourself a favor and eat at Steakhouse 71. Number 14 is one of my favorites. It is coming in at 4.0 via Napoli over in the Italy Pavilion at Epcot. I dream about this pizza, get the pizza, you'll be happy. Number 13, going up at 4.125 stars is going to be Cinderella's Royal Table inside of Cinderella Castle in the Magic Kingdom. I mean, how cool is this? You actually get to eat in Cinderella Castle. Mm -hmm. You get to meet Cinderella herself. Yeah. It is about to change where Cinderella, it has. has it already changed? <laughs> it is changing where now the princesses are coming back around to the tables like they used to do pre-COVID. Of course, with that, they jacked the prices up another <laughs> $20 or so per wah, meal. Wah. So it's pretty expensive. Just Make sure, oh, and you have to prepay for this meal. So at the time that you book it, you're paying for this meal. Just know that going in. Yep. All right, number 12 is Shula's. Um, this one also comes in at 4.125. This was phenomenal. We had such a great meal. It is not cheap. It's once again, kind of a special occasion if you sit in the dining area, but perk, it has a lounge area that you can also check out, which we'll definitely be doing at some point. Number 11 is Amare at 4.25 over at the Swan Reserve. I didn't think this one was gonna get as high as it did, but it is- Especially after we figured out it wasn't on the top floor. I know. <laughs> but it is wonderful. It is Greek food done very, very well. Great. It is very not good. super crowded. You can always get a reservation here. Try it before it gets really found by everyone. Yeah. It's really good. Yep. All right, number 10 is Tiffin's over at Animal Kingdom theme park at 4.25 as well. This one was fantastic. Um, from the story behind the restaurant to the service to the food to getting a fish, a whole fish with the eyes and all. That's a little frightening. It was number nine is over at Animal Kingdom Lodge Kidani Village. It is Sanaa. Just do yourself a favor get the bread service mm. and watch the animals frolicking along <laughs> the savannah. All right, number eight, we're gonna stay at Animal Kingdom Lodge, but we're going over to Jumbo House to Boma. And this one also comes in at 4.25. And I said, arguably that Beer Garden was the best um, buffet. I really think Boma actually beats it out. It was so, so, so good. We went for dinner. I can't wait to go again for breakfast. Love it. Number seven is literally steps from Boma. <laughs> it is Jiko. This was one of our favorite date nights. It is a high-end African-inspired cuisine. It is a signature restaurant. It is in Jumbo House over Animal Kingdom Lodge. A lot of people have asked us the difference, like if we'd prefer Sanaa versus Boma versus Jiko. It really just depends on what type of dining experience you want. Yeah. If you want a special evening date night, go to Jiko. Yeah. 
Obviously, if you're staying at Animal Kingdom Lodge, you can't go wrong with your food options. Coming in at six is Toledo over at the top of uh, Coronado Springs Grand Destino Tower. It also comes in at 4.25. This is one of our favorite date night meals. The view is spectacular. The food is fantastic. Everything's great. Number five is Topolinos Terrace on top of Riviera Resort. Honestly, between Toledo and Topolinos Terrace. I don't know what to pick. I don't either. They, are, <laughs> they were right there next to each other. They are both uh, rooftop dining experiences just on two different resorts. They both are elevated dining experiences. They're just different. I mean, you've got French for Riviera versus um, like Spanish tapas type, type stuff. So um, whatever your preference for food is, go there. They're both wonderful. All right, number four is Raglan Road over at Disney Springs. It comes in at a 4.375. Honestly, the entertainment, the authenticity, the story behind the whole restaurant, it's just do yourself a favor, go. Number three at 4.5 stars at Disney Springs is Chef Art Smith's Homecoming. Mm. Everything is fabulous here. Everything is fabulous. Everything here. is fabulous. The drinks are fabulous. The brunch is fabulous. The lunch is fabulous. The dinner is fabulous. I have never eaten here and not been completely stuffed and satisfied when I left. It's wonderful. Go. Just go. Yeah, and I will say the same thing about number two at the Boathouse, which is also 4.5. I We personally have not ever had one single bad experience at the Boathouse from service to food to just enjoying ourselves. And coming in at number one at a 4.75 was our most recent review, Haleo. I can't even believe it. I was shocked. I mean, I was not expecting that high of a score from this place. We will be back lots. Yeah. I don't know. So there you have it. Those are our top 50. We look forward to putting the, um, we look forward to putting the complete list together for you. But so many of you have asked, I don't keep a list because I want the reviews to speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and when we go back and we re, we re review things for brunches or different things, like that's going to get too weird to have multiple reviews because a brunch may be different than the dinner or whatever, vice versa. But this was a great wrap up. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully it helps. And we appreciate you all watching these. So if you are liking these videos, please hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. And we will see you on the next video.